Hi, my name is Marie Miao. I'm the oncology social worker and also coordinate our art program here at the Ho Cancer Center. I'm happy to have you here. Um, I know there was a little delay in the art kits arriving, um, so we apologize for that. It should be arriving by the end of the week, um, but we hope that you can still follow along um, in your own home at your own time when you receive the email with the direct link to this video. Um, and I'm excited to have Davina Wong here today to do oil pastels with us today. So I will hand it over to you. Hi, I'm glad to be here today um, to teach you guys the art of oil pastels. Um, we will be p drawing this desert scene here, um, a sunset scene with different colors and um, a cactus or two at the end. And I'm gonna teach you guys some basic techniques for oil pastel. And before we begin, I just wanted to make sure you guys have all the materials. Um, so in the kit, we have uh, 16 colors of oil pastels. And um, this brand is actually one of the first oil pastel companies. And it's been around for, I think, almost 100 years. Oh, wow. And um, so this one gives you a good basic variety of different colors. And I'm gonna go over a little bit of color theory so that we're all on the same page. Um, the first set, the red, orange, yellows, are, and pinks are typically the warm colors. And the cool colors are the greens, the blues, and the light blue. So basically, if you mix the warm and the cool colors, it generally produces more of a brown tone. And so if you wanna keep the colors bright, then we keep the warm colors together and the cool colors separately. But today, we're actually going to be using more neutral colors, which includes this ochre color right here, the brown, and also this terracotta brown color. It's kind of like a clay, natural clay color. Um, and we're going to be mixing more of the, the pinks and the purples with these neutral colors. So anytime you mix the neutral colors, it basically neutralizes um, the colors and makes them a little more subdued and not as bold. And so that's what I use to create this desert scene. And of course, black we want to use um, very little of because it tends to overwhelm the picture. And the white we will use to help blend out the colors here to give it more depth. And we won't be using gray today, but you can play around with the, the other colors on your own time. Um, as we also attached a few extra pieces of the pastel paper, which you could also use for watercolor. So you can experiment with different scenes as you like after this class. And we also included a paper clip that was holding the pages together. And we're going to use this as a tool to etch in the designs here called Scrofito. And um, I'll show you guys how to do that in a bit once we get there. And we also have included in the kit a, washi a roll of washi tape. Um, and this we will use to create a frame to tape the paper down onto the table so that when we remove it, it creates this nice little border. And also, if you haven't already, um, you can grab a napkin or tissue to keep on the side just because sometimes when we blend the colors together, they tend to get a little bit um, smudged with the other colors or a little more tainted. So we'll want to rub and clean the color off with a napkin. And also in case there are little crumbs that um, are a result of, oh, see there's a piece of crumb here, <laughs> that come as a result of the pastels. So you can just keep that on the side. And I think we're ready to begin. Great. Okay, so first thing we are going to do is to create the border by taping the paper down. Oh, sorry, before we do that, I wanted to make sure something very important is that if you pick up the piece of paper, you'll notice there are two sides. And um, one side has a bit of texture, and the other side is smooth. So we want to make sure that we're drawing on top of the textured side here. Okay. So we'll begin taping it down vertically. So. Up here.
before we begin, I'm, I just want to share a little story about how I decided to do the desert scene today for today's class. Um, the, I love the desert, but one of my first uh, experiences with the desert was, I think it was several years ago when my oldest one was about eight months old and we were in Joshua Tree and we wanted to walk up to the lookout point. There was a lookout point. I think it was called Keys Lookout Point. Um, and it was around sunset, and so we only had a few minutes before the sun would start going down. And it was a really windy day, so, and it was windier because it was higher up. And so as we were walking up, the wind was blowing, and I, I think I was wearing my eight-month-old. And the, But we really wanted to catch the view before the sun went down, and then we got to the top. And when we finally did, I just remember it being incredibly breathtaking. As I looked out into the lookout, Point, it was like rows and rows of mountain ranges and you could kind of see the salt and sea in the background and then the color in the sky were like it was like a wash of pink and orange yellow maybe with a little hint of purple as well and it just looked like a dream and I remember thinking wow at that at that time it was probably one of the most beautiful um, views I had ever seen yeah. so yeah, so I, I was inspired by that memory and wanted to recreate that in a more of an abstract form today. So with that, we can... Yeah, I think that's the part I love about drawing because you get to keep it forever, so you get to remember that view. Obviously not the same as when you were in person, but mm -hmm. you know, you get yeah. to at least remember the memories, so... Definitely. Yeah. All right. Okay, so... We'll begin by using um, the peach color here. Sorry, mine, <laughs> <laughs> mine has been used. Um, it's this peach color here. We'll begin with um, using this one to start off the background from the top. So we're going to move from top to bottom. And something I do want to mention with oil pastels is that we want to make sure we create enough layers in order to blend the colors. So when we begin the first layer, there'll still be bits of white in the background, but we'll go over it again to help fill in the blanks. And then um, sometimes I go over with a third layer depending on what colors we're trying to blend. But uh, when, we, when we color with oil pastels, you kind of want to go in a circular motion. It looks a little bit like scribbling, so that's why I like to call it oil pastels. It's like the adult version of crayons, although mm -hmm. kids use oil pastels too. but it kind of allows you to channel your inner child and have fun with it. So, so just, you know, have fun, relax, and just, yeah, enjoy the process. So we're gonna begin by just coloring the, I would say the first one sixth of the paper with the peach tone. So it's kind of a, like you're scribbling or drawing little cursive S's, I guess. And we're going to go go over it and if you still have some white in the background that's okay too because we're gonna go over it again with a different color does the pressure of it matter like should we be pressing hard or I think a medium, medium? pressure yeah would be good yeah that's a good point because sometimes when I do push a little bit harder, I end up breaking the, <laughs> <laughs> the oil pastel, which is okay too, because yeah. you can still use this. See, as you can tell, this is a small piece. And sometimes I end up holding it sideways and going over. And some it tends to work even better, I feel like, when you hold it, a piece of it sideways. And you can create kind of a U shape as you go along. Like sort of like an arch. arch. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, more of like a, yeah, more like an arch. Okay. How are you doing? Okay. And then we're going to go over this layer with another color. Um, we're going to use pink next. And same thing, we're just going to go over it and squiggle motion to fill in the 
blanks, if, as you see more whites in the background, you can go over it with the pink color. Leaving just maybe a little bit of peach at the end. You feel like a kid again. <laughs> it's actually a, a little bit of an arm workout. <laughs> or I'm just really out of shape. <laughs> that could be very much the case. It's just fun to be in a space where you're just not thinking about anything else but what's on the paper. Mm -hmm. And there's no right or wrong with this. Yeah. And everyone's artwork will look different, which is the beauty of creating art, right? You mm -hmm. make it your own. Okay. Okay. And then. We're gonna go over it later with some white. So don't worry about, you know, some little bits of white still showing because we're gonna go over it a third time later on as we blend the rest of the colors together. So um, we're going to use a little bit more of the peach color to drag the color down a little bit further. I'd say just about an inch further down. And you can go over the pink part as well to help it blend better. So the more you go over it, the more you'll notice the colors blending together naturally, which is kind of neat with oil pastels mm -hmm. that you can't do with regular wax crayons. I guess as you <laughs> oh, yeah. kind of wear down your pastel, you might have to rip off the paper. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they do wear down faster than wax crayons. Okay. And it's just slightly a bit messier, hence the reason why we have a napkin. Mm -hmm. but, um, and later on, if you'd like, we can use the fingers to blend, or you can just use, you can either use the oil pastels to blend to add more layers, or you could also lightly use your fingers. But the thing is, um, if you don't have enough layers and you blend with the finger, it tends to create kind of a, like a smear or a smudge instead of blending. So you wanna make sure you have enough color before you, you blend it with your fingers. And we'll go over that later when we get to the third layer as well. Um, and the next color we're gonna use will be the yellow. We're going to extend the peach. You can go over the, the last quarter inch of the peach. Whoops, <laughs> see, <laughs> I used a little bit too much pressure again. <laughs> and we're going to go down about, I'd say, an inch and a half. I didn't know that with oil pastels, the stroke is to go in a circular motion, but that makes sense since you're drawing on a textured piece of paper. Mm hmm Yeah, it helps f fill in the, the little blanks, you know, yeah, the little the textured yeah. parts better too, and it's easier to blend. Yeah. And then we're going to add the white next. So I'd go over a, just probably a quarter inch again from the bottom of the yellow where we left off. Go over it with the white and extend downwards about 
another inch and a half. I know it's kind of hard to see yeah. white sometimes. <laughs> We can actually drag the white down just maybe another half inch. So we can, when we begin drawing the mountain ranges, we can draw it over the white part so it's more seamless. <laughs> and then once you're done coloring the white part um, you can move upwards if you have a bunch of yellow on there that's okay too because we're going to blend out the top part the starting from the top where we started and go downwards just to help the colors blend together a little bit better and if you feel like you're oil pastel is getting, um, picking up a little bit too much color, you can always wipe it a little bit just to keep it more of a white color. <laughs> I broke it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like it's kind of more fun when yeah. it breaks off and you're actually holding the oil pastel. So go back again in circular motions. It should begin to cover all the the white part. And continue going down to the yellow. Oh, and I also wanted to mention um, we can add a little bit of purple to the top corners to give it a little bit of that purple color. Gives it a little bit more of a gradient look to it. So we can put just a little bit of purple on the okay. corner here. You do just the corners. And then we'll go over it again with the white to help it blend better. Purple is my least favorite color, so <laughs> unless I'm told to add it in, I usually wouldn't use it. So it's it's good when it's classes like this when you're asked to add it in. Yeah, purple is probably also <laughs> my least favorite color as well. But I feel like yeah, when it's but it's you in know a, yeah, if it's in a an, an artwork with other colors, then yeah. I feel a little bit more inclined to use it. <laughs> And then we can also try blending lightly with our fingers to just smooth out the surface. And you don't want to use too much pressure when you blend with your finger 
use the pad of your fingers and just lightly blend it, just like what Marie's doing right now. <laughs> yeah, you're doing a good job. Okay. You're natural. <laughs> kind of patting it, maybe in a slight brush brushing movement. Should it, does it matter which direction or can it? No, I think, things? yeah, any direction. Just have fun with it. It's just important to use light motions so that you don't drag any section or smear the, the oil pastel. Next we can start with the mountain ranges. So I'm going to start with the peach color again. Use this side. And then start where a little bit, maybe about half an inch above your the last section that we colored white. And just go across. I start a little bit higher up and then go down like a mountain range slope. It doesn't have to look exactly like what I'm doing here, so you can make your own version of a mountain range. It's kind of nice when it just organically flows. And then I'm gonna go all the way across and color all the way down the rest of the page kind of create a base layer for the rest of the mountain ranges. Sometimes there are little bits of oil pastel crumbs left behind. Sometimes I like to just lightly pat them down with my finger to let them blend into the paper. If it bothers you, you could probably also take a napkin and just lightly brush it off. I'll lightly just pat it into the paper. create another layer of mountain range with the uh, ochre color and then I'm going to start on the opposite side where I started the peach here and I might make it a little bit higher than the peach and then go downwards um, lower than the peaks of the peach so we can still see the peach and then go down this side so it's sloping the opposite direction color that one all the way down as well, creating a second layer overlapping the peach. Back in the squiggle motion. Oops. 
have another one. <laughs> <laughs> this would be fun to do when you're actually like in nature. Uh huh. Whatever. With the view in front of yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. And it's so portable. You could just throw it in your bag or hiking bag. Yeah. And just bring a little notebook or a clipboard. You can do this anywhere. Especially like when nature is one of the safest areas where we can be right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that is a silver lining, I yeah. feel like, of during this time. More people are g going outdoors and enjoying the beautiful nature. I know it's helped me appreciate nature more. I think I've always enjoyed nature, more so when I was younger, but this year and last year really kind of pushed me to be outdoors more. <laughs> yeah, it's like, who knew America had so much beauty uh -huh. and places so close to us, we don't yeah. have to leave. Exactly, and the best part is it's free. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna blend out some of the <laughs> crumbs that left little marks here. I might even actually use this ochre to go over a little bit of the yellow, where the pink, um, where the pink and the yellow meet, just to neutralize the sky a little bit. I'm just gonna add a little bit, about an inch wide in like an arch shape, so you can see how the the ochre, which is a neutral color, helps neutralize the colors. But you could also leave it if you prefer bold color. But I just think it's fun when you can create layers. And then I'm going to go over it with white afterwards to blend it out a bit so you don't see as much of the, the texture of the color. This makes it look a little bit more cohesive. we're done blending out the sky we can begin the third mountain range which will be we'll be using the brown color and we can start on the opposite side as this ochre color mountain range so we'll probably go start around here leaving about an inch of the peach on top so we can still see the mountain range here and then cross so and it's, it's like not the brick red, so, yeah, but not the, the brick brown. Red, oh, brown, but the brown brown, more of a true brown with less of the red pigment. So this one we're going to use at the end. Okay. Oh, there goes another one. <laughs> <laughs> Do we go all the way and down with um, this one? Or this one? Yeah, we can go all the way down to the bottom. It's nice to have more layers. And then um, later on when we go over it with the scraffito to etch texture into the mountain range, you mm -hmm. can see a little bit of the background color as it as you etch through the colors. Mm. You can go over the tops of the mountain range a little bit more if you want it to the, the mountain range shape to be a little bit more defined. You know, sometimes when you color, it tends to go over a little bit. Okay. <laughs> 
Okay, and then once we're done coloring the third mountain range, we'll be using um, black next, which is a color I use the least just because it's such a strong color. So we'll go over, the, let's see, we'll start on the right side, leaving room for the terracotta color. Actually, I'll hold on. I'm going to make my mountain range here a little bit higher so there's more room for the last color. And then, yeah, yours should be good. You have more space. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> okay so I'll leave like about an inch space for the brown to still show. Okay. And then this color, we're not going to color all the way down so that we can leave a little bit of room for the last mountain range, which will be done with the terracotta brick brown color. So we're going to slope downwards, and you can go up a bit. Leaving some room for the last color. Looking good. Are you having fun? <laughs> yeah. in my zone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's very relaxing to do art sometimes. Especially when you're not thinking about making it look perfect. I feel like it's Yes. You know, you can relax and enjoy creating the art. A lot of times it's the imperfections in art that make the artwork beautiful. Like kids are they love to paint and create art, and whenever they do, there's always like an element of um, of imperfection that makes the art beautiful because they don't think about making their art perfect or realistic. They just create because they enjoy creating. And I feel like as we grow older, we lose a bit of that in us. Um, the first one that we're going to draw, we're going to use black, and we're going to draw on top of the, brown, the black mountain range. So you can make it, um, I would say, extend it towards maybe the middle part of the brown, depending on how much of the, o of the ochre color, depending on how much ochre you have. So you, yeah, you can yeah. go towards the middle part of it. Join the middle stem and just extend the branches of the cactus. And then after we're done drawing the first cactus, the second one we're going to use brown because it's further out more into the light, so we'll make that one lighter. 
by using the true brown color. And that one I'm going to set on the left side on top of the ochre color. I'll give you guys a little bit of time to finish your first cactus. I have another desert store and this one involves my, my son. We, the last time we went to Joshua Tree, which was last year, um, we were staying at an Airbnb in, in like the middle of the desert <laughs> and they had a cactus garden in the back and the kids were excited. They were running around the backyard because it was a huge plot of land and I was in the kitchen um, prepping food and the next thing you know I see my son running around in the backyard with his shirt off so I just thought okay well it's, it's a hot day and then he had a wrap around his arm and then <laughs> I was asking my husband why is his shirt off and what's what what does he have a uh, gauze wrapped around his arm and he looks at me and he tells me oh he was attacked by a cactus <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, what? <laughs> and it turns out he, he was running through the cactus garden um, at the Airbnb, and they had, a, they had several what they call teddy bear cactus. The name is deceiving because they look fluffy, <laughs> but they're actually not vicious, I guess, but they're, <laughs> they're quite deadly because once it touches against something, even lightly, the slightest movement will cause the teddy bear cactus to fall off. A piece of it will fall off and latch on to the object or person. So he <laughs> had a, a piece of cactus, like a round piece of cactus about this big, attached to his arm. <gasps> and he was running around <laughs> with oh it still God. attached to his arm screaming. <laughs> and then so my husband um, had to figure out how to pull it. I don't even know how he pulled it off. <laughs> he had a friend with him. And then they were Googling how to take out the, the tiny little needles. And online it said you could put Elmer's glue on it and let it dry and peel it off because there, there are several micro little needles that are very difficult to remove with your fingers. And so this went on, I guess, when we were prepping food in the kitchen. <laughs> but thankfully, they, they were able to get all the needles out, and so hence the reason why he had a gauze wrapped around his arm. <laughs> but to this day, when we asked him what was his favorite part of that trip, and he said it was being attacked by the cactus. <laughs> <laughs> it was a proud moment for him to yeah. be able to be brave. <laughs> to show off his battle scars. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we'll add the second cactus on the left side on top of the ochre color. The, I mean the ochre color mountain range. And that one I'm going to make a little bit smaller. So it'll extend just, yeah, maybe either slightly above the peach or onto the top part of the peach color mountain range. And when we're done drawing the cactus, we're going to take the orange color, which is next to the red, to draw the sun, the sunset. And I'm going to set it, you can probably put it either in the middle or I like to put it slightly more towards the right side so it's a little bit off-centered. About, I would say, half an inch above the last mountain range which would be either the peach color or ochre color mountain range. So I'm going to set it right around here. And it'll probably be about the size of a half dollar. Do people still use half dollars? <laughs> <laughs> and then color in a circular motion. When you color in a circular motion, it prevents the object from looking flat, as opposed to coloring this way. So if you go in the movement of the shape of the object, it gives it more depth. Okay. So so you can set it about, a, about half an inch or an inch above the mountain range. And then we're going to add uh, one more layer of um, color to the sun. 
just on the side to give it a little bit more of a, to create kind of a shadow so it looks a little bit more, it gives it a little bit more of a 3D look to it. So I'm just going to draw on one side, the right side of the sun, just maybe halfway with the brown color. Sorry, I forgot to mention. I'm using the brown color to highlight the, or to create a shadow on the right side of the sun. And then I'm going to go over it again with the orange to go over the brown part to blend it in. And then after we've blended it in, I'm going to highlight. So we highlight with a lighter color. So I'm going to be using the white to highlight the side of the sun. Oops, broke another piece. <laughs> now I have a tiny piece of white left. So just a little bit of an accent white color on the side just to make it brighter. And after we're done with the sun, then we can begin um, etching, which I had mentioned is called scraffito, using the paper clip that we um, used to hold the papers. So whenever you're ready, we can. Okay. <laughs> you can take your time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Mm. So we'll just pull out um, the bottom part of the paper clip just to pull out just a little bit like this. And, and I use this part as a handle, so. So this shape is fine, whatever is comfortable for you. If it's easier to hold it with this further out, you can pull it out a little bit more. So we're going to use the paper clip to etch designs onto the mountain range, and as well as the cactus and the sun. So we can begin with the sun so I like to go with the movement of how we colored the sun. So I'm going to etch the sides to give it a little more dimension and, and um, texture. Kind of creates a fun element to have the design. And if you have time later on, you can also, um, we won't be doing the sky, but you could also create a nice little design in the sky. Perhaps you could do like a starry night you know, the mm -hmm. squiggles, mm -hmm. swirls, or you could just etch lines. Mm -hmm. And then um, we're going to go over the cactus with the paper clip as well. You can create little spikes in the <laughs> cactus. It's kind of fun. Because you can get a lot of the detail in there with this. done adding the spikes onto the cactus and um, we're going to go over the tops of each of the mountain ranges to create uh, little lines in the same movement as the shape of the mountain range to accent the mountain range so it helps it pop out a little bit more. So I'll start with the peach color first and just go the movement of the mountain range in a motion kind of resembling waves in a sense. So I like to add on top of half of the mountain range, so I'm not going all the way down, but you can choose to do the entire mountain range if you'd like. I just want to add a little bit of an accent. So moving on to the next mountain range, the ochre color. And you can use the napkin to wipe off any excess oil pastel since we have a lot of layers going on. You 
it gives it sort of a whimsical feel to the picture. Kind of makes it look like it's moving. A bit yeah. more. It's like movement in the picture. I like it on the black because it makes it less like, like dark. flat, right? Yeah. yeah. Gives it more dimension. Crumbs on mine too. And on the last part, the last mountain range, a little more texture. And when you're done adding the texture um, and you're happy with the way the picture looks and you feel like it's complete, then you can slowly remove the washi tape. So you want to be gentle because sometimes the pastel adheres to the side and it might cause the paper to rip a little bit. So just gently pull in the opposite direction. Just slowly remove it so it doesn't rip the paper. I feel like that was one of my favorite parts <laughs> you know. when finishing the image. With a nice little border yes. gives it a kind of a gallery look. Yeah. shake off the excess <laughs> bit of crumbs from the oil pastel. I have a lot of crumbs. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> and if you'd like, you can sign your name on the bottom corner and be proud of the artwork that you just created. Sometimes it's nice to write the date, so when you look mm -hmm. back at your drawing, um, can kind of see the progress or um, even kind of jot down how you're feeling um, oh, behind the piece yeah. of paper so <laughs> you can remember um, your progress and journey. Oh, I'm going to use that next time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like to when my kids make art, I always tell them, okay, put the year, because I want to remember when yeah. they created that. I think as adults, we don't always think about that. Yeah. Right? But it is true. It's good to see your yes. the progress in your journey. Yeah. You did an amazing job. I like nice. yours. Thank I you. I like how they're all different. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone has a different style. Looks very scruffy. No, I like Adds that. Adds the texture. <laughs> and it's glowing, the sunset. Yay. All right. Well, I think we are done here. Um, thank you so much for joining us. Um, if you watch this and you have questions as you go along this time, you can feel free to email us and um, let us know those questions. Um, and we will try to answer them as best as we can. Um, and Thank you so much for being patient with us this month, and uh, we hope to see you at our next one.
Thank you. Thank you.